Hey there, it's Andy with Reverb, and today I'm talking about boost pedals, and more importantly, how to choose the right boost for your own rig. On the surface, it might seem like a really easy choice, but a quick search on Reverb for new and used boost pedals will quickly tell you that not all circuits are designed the same. So let's start with the simplest form of boost, and that's usually a one-knob design called a clean boost. These usually have up to 20 decibels of clean signal meaning it just pushes a hotter signal into your amp without generating any overtones or clipping. Today I have with me the classic BBE Boost de Grande and the TC Electronic Spark Mini. Some other great choices you could find on Reverb are the MXR Micro Amp, Keeley Katana, and of course the Electro Harmonics Linear Power Booster, pretty much the one that started it all. Here's a couple different examples using a clean boost. First, it's just bringing up the overall level while keeping everything clean, even the tube amp I'm plugged into. Then I'll place a boost before the overdrive and then a boost after it to bring up the overall volume. <laughs> So for those of you that just want to push your amp harder, some unexpected things may come from a clean boost just going straight into the front end. You'll notice a little bit soggier low end because it's not really able to handle all those low frequencies. Well, funny enough, this was actually handled way back in the late 60s with something called a treble booster. A treble booster generally uses a single transistor, and they call it treble booster because it actually rolls off quite a bit of low end. This high pass filtering was a great way to keep cranked up amplifiers from sounding too muddy. Plus it added some extra top end, which was really helpful in the days when PAs weren't their strongest. Probably the most famous would be the Dallas Rangemaster, used by Brian May, Tony Iommi, and even Eric Clapton. The one I'm playing through today is the Catlin Bread Naga Viper, which gives you those classic treble booster tones and more since it lets bass back into the circuit and lets you control the gain of the transistor. Some other great choices in the style of the Dallas Rangemaster are the Analog Man Beano Boost and the Earthquaker Devices Bose. So with a pretty classic treble booster setting on this Naga Viper from Catlin Bread, let's see how it really slices through an already overdriven JTM 45. <laughs> Despite doing its job, the treble booster has some limitations. If it's a germanium transistor, it's really going to be susceptible to changes in temperature, and it's going to add a little bit extra noise. So what if we took the clean boost and added some EQ? Well, a lot of companies have already done that over the past few decades, so here's a couple of great options. 
Luckily, Boost EQ pedals still keep it simple, like the Walrus Emissary, letting you blend in two parallel boosts, one treble and one mid-range. I'm also using the Poppy from Flower Pedals, a clean boost with a sweepable frequency boost on top, and Fender's newer Engager Boost, which gives you three bands of EQ and volume. So in contrast to the clean boost, which doesn't really want to color your sound, sometimes you'll find something called a preamp instead of a boost. And although it is boosting the signal, it's really taking some circuitry from another device, such as an EP3 Echoplex or a console. Along with boosting your signal, a preamp can add some really unexpected results, like extra compression or overtones, or just completely revoice the way your guitar sounds. Today I'm using the Exotic EP Booster, but you could also find the Dunlop Echoplex Pre and Catlin Bread Epoch Pre on Reverb. Some other preamps to check out that didn't start off as standard stomp boxes are the Clover from JHS Pedals based on the old Boss FA-1, and JHS's Color Box, which is modeled after the classic Neve Console preamp. Now the last type of boost is a really unique category because it straddles the line between clean boost, overdrive, and fuzz, and that's because it's using not one transistor like the treble booster, but three transistors. Some famous examples here, of course, would be the color sound, power booster, or overdriver, depending on what country you're in, and the Univox Unidrive. Fortunately, you can find some more affordable recreations on reverb, such as the Jex Telez Unidrive, and the throwback overdrive boost. So in front of me I have the breakdown from Dan Electro and it uses a six position breakup switch to increase the gain of those transistors. So you could start from crystal clear all the way to something quite fuzzy. <laughs>
Well, hopefully that helps narrow your search for a boost on Reverb. And if you've already found one, please leave a comment below and tell us how you use it in your rig. As always, thanks for watching.